There's the Wendy I know. NBC this summer's new and different. Spy TV's back every Tuesday. You've never seen hidden cameras do this, like a limo on the NASCAR track. Here I come! The wrong way. Turn right! Holy And check out our valet Parker. And see you later, Mom. My son's in that party. And these ladies show up to fix your car. Do you have a jack? With host Ali Landry, Spy TV, NBC Tuesdays at 8, 7 central. Tonight, Jay's all new with Nev Campbell, ER's Mackay Pfeiffer, Willie Nelson and Leanne Womack, and behind the scenes at Divas Las Vegas. Then on Conan, Hillary Swank, all new tonight. You know the saying, there's no such thing as a free lunch. But how about a free car, or a free vacation, or a year's worth of free M&Ms? The woman you're about to meet has won all of those things and more, and she says you can too. But as Hoda Kopp discovered, just like that lunch, these free prizes come at a price. Luck be a lady tonight. For everybody else, this may look like a typical trash day. But there's gold in those piles. Sweepstakes, free trips, free money, free cars for the asking. But more often than not, for most of us, that gold goes unclaimed. I think when a lot of us see those things in the papers or in magazines, Shrug your shoulders. Nobody wins those. But people do. Real people win. They see it and they just flip the page. It doesn't mean anything to them. To me, I go, aha. 69-year-old <laughs> Janice Strell, a mother of three from New York, has found her fortune on the back pages of newspapers and magazines. Sweepstakes. Fill them out, send them in. Somebody has to win. And more often than you'd think, it's Janice. <laughs> uh, a trip to Hawaii, a trip to um, uh, Florida, a trip to Argentina, a trip to uh, the Super Bowl, a year's worth of Kellogg cereals, a year's worth of uh, M&Ms. She's won so many prizes, she can't even remember them all. Trips to the islands and to Met's training camp, a windsurfer, a camcorder, theater tickets, a ride in a limo, and one in a fighter jet. You name it, she's won it. In all, after 20 years, Janice has raked in prizes worth about $50,000. And she only enters sweepstakes where you simply send in an entry form and your name is picked randomly from the pile. No obligation to buy anything. So how does she win? And more importantly, how can you? We asked Janice to give us her tips on how to be a sweepstakes success story. You know what it takes to win these sweepstakes. Yes. Tip number one, you've got to find them to win them. They are literally everywhere. They're in the food coupon. They're in the advertisements, a Target or Kmart. If you look through them, you're going to find them. Janice says if you walk down the aisles of a supermarket, you'll see them all over. So now that you've found your entry forms, what next? Tip number two, which sounds easy, but Janice says most people don't do this. Follow the directions. If they ask for a three by five card, it's a three by five card. And if they tell you to write it in block print. You block print. So you gotta follow it exactly. Exactly. And like every good ball player, Janice has her superstitions. She uses bold colors to bring attention to the entry. I use a large commemorative stamps, and sometimes if I have stickers that have come with something else, I'll put a sticker on. Does it work? It does for her. Okay, now you've got your entries neatly filled out on the regulation 3 by 5 cards and your envelopes decorated. So what do you do with them? The answer is tip number three, the multiple mailbox method. I will put some entries in my mailbox. I will go to the post office and mail some. I will drop some off at work. For each sweepstakes, Janice believes she increases the odds of having her entries picked if she spreads them out among the many bags of mail that often arrive at sweepstakes offices. By now, this may seem like too much work for some free jars of pasta sauce. And in the beginning, her family thought so too. My whole family. <laughs> 
were naysayers. That's why my daughter-in-law won the car, because my son didn't believe in sweepstakes. So I didn't enter him. I entered his wife. And when she got the car, she said, that's mine. <laughs> you won a car. Car. She got a Chevy Lumina. What she had was a prize that was worth $16,000 towards any Chevy car she wanted. <laughs> Tip number four, set a budget. Janice limits herself to six entries per sweepstakes. That means $2 spent in postage trying for each prize. That sounds reasonable until we learned she enters about 1,000 sweepstakes each year. The total's 106.60. I spend about $2,000 a year on postage. Two grand? Two grand, yes. That's a lot of cash. But for a, uh, a car, I mean, the car is still cheap. Now, before you chase that dream of a Ferrari, you should know something. Often when you win, Uncle Sam does too. But considering the, the taxes and considering the expense with the postage and the time, is it really worth it? Do you really actually end up winning anything? Ah, uh, yes. The trips we have taken, I don't think we would have even thought of on our own, and we have had great times. Trips with her husband to Hawaii and Canada, but her favorite trip was to Argentina. She won that one by filling out a sweepstakes form in a Hispanic newspaper. She says the key to all of it is simple. Just enter. I think that I enter things that nobody else enters because they don't even know they exist. So you've won like the first prize, the second prize, the third prize? Yes. You've swept so, the category, all Janice. Janice has won a lot, but what do the companies that sponsor the sweepstakes get out of it? It gets their name across to people. Um, I once won a year's supply of shampoo for my nephew. He liked the shampoo so much that he still uses it to this day. Well, several of the companies also said that by when they get sweepstakes entries, they form what amounts to a mailing list. Then they're able to take this mailing list of potential customers and sell that list. How does that grab you? I have received junk mail, but very often that junk mail consists of other sweepstakes. So you don't see this junk mail. There's a treasure buried in there yes, somewhere. Yes, yes. And in the end, Janice has one last piece of advice. So you think it's just good karma to write a thank you yes, note? Yes, and it keeps them in the sweepstakes business if they know that you're enjoying it and that you appreciate it. Yes. So the, the sweepstakes companies we contacted agreed with Janice Strill, saying it is important to follow the directions by supplying all the information requested. But they say the main reason Janice wins is simply because she enters so often. Still ahead, he's in prison for murder. His brother says he has information that should set him free. So why hasn't he told his story in court? I was afraid. I was really afraid. Now he has a new chance to tell the judge what he knows. Will he finally tell all? Plus, why would anyone take a perfectly good $40,000 jag and do this? You'll find out when we bring you the latest crash test results from the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, a Dateline consumer alert. What if water worked harder? What if water were as active as you? What if Gatorade made water? Propel Fitness Water. Lightly flavored, vitamin charged. It's how Gatorade does water. Propel the Fitness Water. I can't find it. What? Our promise that we kill germs. Look, Clorox Bleach's promise is right on the label. But, but, but we don't have a promise. What? Oh, that's more bad luck. Clorox Bleach promises to kill germs. Now you can bring home your very own <laughs> snow dogs. Bad doggy! They're housebroken. How you like that? Oh, that's cold. Loyal. <laughs> ah, let go! Tastes like chicken. <laughs> and obedient. Ready, set, push! <laughs> ah! <laughs> what a drag. <laughs> snow dogs, 
Now available to own on Disney DVD and video. Rated PG. Tell it to paw. They created the characters you love on Will and Grace. This fall on NBC, the creators of Will and Grace do it again. I'm Lucia Rojas Miller. A new comedy about the worst talk show in Miami. I've had pelvic exams that are more fun than that show. And the man who will change it all. You're firing me? I'm a freaking nun! And the woman who will change him. Me go now? Starring Mark Feuerstein and introducing Ashley Williams. Good Morning Miami, Thursdays this fall on NBC. Introducing Almay Kinetin, an anti-aging breakthrough discovered in plants. You'll see dramatic results without irritation, with no stinging, no peeling, no prescription. And it really works. Almay, the pure source for beautiful. So have you narrowed it down yet? Yeah, it's between the GE, the Maytag, or the Whirlpool. Or the Frigidaire, or the Amana, or the Kenmore. I'm going back to the TVs. Good thing you've got four days. Sears Big Memorial Day sale with huge savings store-wide. All appliances, TVs, and camcorders are on sale. Plus, get 0% financing until October. The brands you want, the guarantees, credit, and service you need. Sears. Where else? At NBC Memorial Day event, Steven Spielberg and Stephen E. Ambrose present a gripping war story told by the men who were there, how sworn enemies became friends, and how these heroes finally faced their fears. I'm hoping to put these bills to rest. The Price for Peace with Tom Brokaw, Monday, 8, 7 central on NBC. Dateline Tuesday, another church sex controversy, and this time, it's not the Catholics. A young girl abused. I was raped. I'm being shunned. And she's just one of hundreds of alleged abuse cases, many kept secret until now. They know about children being molested. Dateline Tuesday on NBC. Dateline NBC, winner of the Gabriel Award for Excellence in Journalism. America's most watched, most honored news magazine, Dateline. We'll be right back. NBC is proud to be America's number one network. The number one show. Oh, my God! The number one drama. We're going to save this one. The number one new drama and new comedy. Number one in the morning. Nightly news. Primetime and late night. I feel like I'm in contract negotiations. <laughs> From the beginning of the day till late at night, only one network is number one. The quality shows on NBC. David Johnson and Gina Redman on Channel 11 News. Summer is on the way. It's time for the Lazarus Memorial Day sale with savings on summer essentials plus a shopping pass for extra savings. Time after time. So hurry to your neighborhood Ford dealer before May 31st. One call gets you immediate coverage and low monthly payments. Which you could make over the phone. Or by logging on to our website. So play it safe. Call 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. WPXI.com's local experts is your source for free expert advice. With one click of the mouse, you'll get expert personal injury legal advice from Edgar Snyder & Associates. From our studios in New York, here is Jane Pauling. Our next story is about two brothers, one in prison, the other in a prison of sorts, one of his own making. He says that for 13 years he's lived with the knowledge that his brother is serving time for a murder he didn't commit, and that he knows his brother wasn't even involved in the killing, because he was. Will he finally tell the truth? Here's Mike Taibbi. It's eating me up inside. I want everybody to know. It ain't something that I can just live with. Knowing that my brother's in jail for something he didn't do. And all I was doing, trying to do is just tell the truth. Lorenzo Branch is talking about his look-alike kid brother, Lamont. And the truth he says he's been trying to tell, that many wonder why he's taken so long to tell, is about a shooting that sent his brother to prison 13 years ago and has kept him there ever since. The truth, Lorenzo Branch says, is that he was involved in that shooting, he alone and that his kid brother had nothing to do with it. It happened here on a rainy March day in 1988, the height of the urban drug epidemic, a thousand murders a year in Brooklyn alone. In a drug den, in a dilapidated apartment complex, a single shot to the head made an alleged drug dealer one of those statistics. The man who claims he was arguing with the victim that day, Lorenzo Branch, says it was all an accident, and an accident that happened heartbeat fast. 
Before I know it, he was pulling something from his waist. I seen a hand or something like that, and I just rushed him. I, I grabbed his, his wrist. I didn't know. And after I grabbed his wrist and, and I'm to, to push him back, I heard a shot ring off, and then he fell. When the victim fell, Lorenzo says, he turned and ran. Immediately, the neighborhood scuttlebutt had him as the shooter. That's why when an arrest was finally made 14 months later, it was a surprise. Not Lorenzo, but his kid brother, identified as the gunman by two local crack addicts. Why didn't you go down to the precinct and just tell somebody at that point, you got the wrong guy, I was the guy in the apartment, let me tell you the straight story. I didn't trust the system. I didn't trust the system. They looking for a body, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they want somebody. They not gonna just, you know, let somebody go and not have somebody in the place of it or something like that. Something out of it. Ain't that how the system works? And you didn't trust any cop anywhere or anybody in the system to believe you, even knowing that your kid brother was sitting in jail? Yes. Neither brother is an angel. Each had criminal convictions. So Lorenzo says he expected no mercy from the criminal justice system, and he was afraid of being pinned for a murder. But the shooting and his brother's arrest had started to torment Lorenzo. So much so that he says he began telling his family bits and pieces of his story, that his little brother had nothing to do with it. But he also made it clear to them he wasn't going to repeat his story on the record to anyone who mattered, even if it meant his brother would stay in jail to face a murder trial. I see my brother, he's in jail for something he didn't do, so I didn't want them to do the same thing what they did to him. You know what I'm saying? Belinda, their sister, says she and the family understood what Lorenzo was saying, that he was afraid of being tossed in jail himself, and that even if he came forward, it might not get his brother out. But she says they all decided if he wasn't going to come forward, they would. Belinda says she went down to the Brooklyn prosecutor's office and voluntarily took a lie detector test. I told him exactly what I knew. Which was that Lorenzo was a shooter? Yes. Did the DA or did any cops ever come and interview you about the shooting? No. Never? No. No one come and interview me about the shooting. They didn't want the truth. They had a man, and that's all they was concerned with. They found you, and they said, we're hearing a story that uh, we find credible that you were there and uh, your brother Lamont wasn't. What would you have said to them? I probably would have told them the truth. You would have told them the truth? Probably so, yes. Because if they saying they heard something already like that, you know, why would I deny it then? This is my little brother. I, I love him. You understand why Lamont would say, you know, no big brother to me. He left me hanging. Yeah. Yeah. Because he felt like that, um, I'm not standing up to my responsibilities, you know. And it's not true. But the family thought it was true back then. And his mother, Ruthell, says that with a trial at hand, she finally confronted her older son. I said, if you don't come to court, then uh, they're going to convict him. Up. So uh, Renzo said, well, we wait and see what happens. Lorenzo did speak with the defense attorney on the phone once, but he never showed up in court. He says he expected his brother to be acquitted. He was wrong, and the four-day trial ended with his brother's conviction for second-degree murder, burglary, and criminal possession of a weapon, basically on the shaky testimony of two crack addicts who said they saw Lamont Branch that morning leaving the victim's apartment with a gun in his hand. The sentence, 25 years to life. The family was rocked. My heart just fell at my feet. By the time he got out of jail, I'd be passed away. Or wouldn't be around to see him, you know, get out. But now they were more determined than ever to find a way to free one brother they were absolutely certain was innocent, even at the risk of sending the other to prison instead. They kept the pressure on. How many times do you think you said to him, Lorenzo, you have to do the right thing? I don't know. More times than I can count, I guess. Dozens? More than that, I guess. Anytime you come around, you're like, why are you looking at me like that? He's like he had a guilty feeling inside it. Everybody's looking at him because you got your brother sitting in jail for something he ain't doing. Lorenzo says he felt the pressure and says that when his brother was convicted, he tried but failed to find a lawyer who said he could both protect him and get his brother out of jail. Did you ever think of, instead of um, uh, going to a lawyer who represented you, going to a lawyer who represented the people, the DA's office? You know, and, and I'm rolling the dice here. I'm going to trust the system. Did you ever think about doing that? No. I went to him. 
I never thought about doing that. While Lorenzo remained a free man, his kid brother boiled in anger in one prison after another. In letters home, he was bitter. And in 1994, he had a single phone conversation with his big brother. It wasn't pleasant. And he said, like, what's up? I said, what you mean, what's up? So, how's it going? I said, what you mean, how it's going? And I said, uh, what kind of, what kind of, like, what kind of shit? What, what kind of shit you want, like, you know what I'm saying? And he said, yeah, right, Hamlet, you yeah. know? Deal with it, Hamlet. Yeah, uh-huh. That's the last time you spoke with him? Mm -hmm. That same year, though, five years after his younger brother went to prison, Lorenzo did take another step, making this video statement. You know, in the beginning, I wanted to, you know, correct it, you know what I'm saying? But um, who wants to go to jail, you know? Oh. And I know, it's, and you know, you know in your heart that, you know, you, nothing was done intentionally, you know? He was my brother, and I wanted to help him, and I wanted the truth to get out, to clear my soul. So that's why I made the tape. But even in confessing, he failed to go all the way. He did not sign a sworn affidavit, which helped make his videotape statement meaningless in court. Excuse me? With each legal setback, the strains on the family deepened, and each jail visit with Lamont got harder for their mother. You coming out, and you look back, you see him looking, and it just tell you how to... And so I, I, I want to go see him, and I hate to go see him, because I hate to leave him there, and it really hurts. Because I know he ain't got no business in there because he didn't do it. Then in 1997, eight years after Lamont's arrest and after a failed appeal, his big brother had another chance to set the record straight at a hearing. As the judge waited for Lorenzo to appear, Belinda sat in his van trying to persuade him to do the right thing. Sure, he said, my birthday, I don't want to go to jail right now. I need some more time to think about it. I need to get an attorney. He did get on the stand that day. But when it came time to back up his videotape statement in court, under oath, he backed off again and took the fifth. When you heard your brother say, I take the Fifth Amendment in court, what did you think? Hey, it wasn't like no big brother to me, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know who Lorenzo is right now. I was afraid. I was really afraid. Did it occur to you, though, that if you took the fifth, if you didn't tell the whole story, if you didn't answer every question, it wasn't going to work? Nah, it never occurred to me. The judge who ruled he had no choice but to keep his brother in jail nonetheless wrote there was a gnawing sense that Lorenzo was involved in the shooting and the possibility that the defendant is innocent. Three more years passed. Lorenzo was working as a construction foreman, and then a break. A new lawyer Lorenzo consulted, Bruce Barquette, believed his story and set out to prove it and get it heard in court. What we did is investigate the case to test the story. The first test, one of the two crack addicts whose testimony had virtually made the case against Lorenzo's kid brother recanted his story. All lies, he said. But that wasn't going to be enough, not on its own. And nor were the lie detector tests both brothers took voluntarily and passed. To win a new hearing, Lorenzo was going to have to finally sign that sworn affidavit and tell his story in court under oath and not fall apart under what would surely be a blistering cross-examination. Would he do it? Would he get on the stand? Early in March, he was prepped by both his lawyer and his brother's lawyer. I want to go over what the hearing's going to be like a little bit, and I want to go over some of the questions that I'm going to ask you so that whatever I ask you on Friday is not going to be any kind of surprise. We spoke with him four days before the scheduled hearing. So you're ready to do this? Yes. Any chance you're going to change your mind on Friday? Has it been as hard for you as the affidavit suggests over all these years? <laughs> any talk about his brother, any talk about the shooting, still pushes him over the emotional edge. So do the questions about why it's taken him so long, 13 years that his brother has spent languishing in a prison, to own up completely. If you're willing to face the consequences now, why didn't you do it 10 years ago, 8 years ago, 5 years ago, and take the entire risk? as you're doing now? I don't know. So when you said didn't come forward, I always try to come forward. It's just that I didn't have the means to come forward the way I wanted to come forward. He says that over the years, one lawyer after another advised him against coming forward all the way, but that now he was ready. His mother and his sister believed him. That would set him free, his brother free, and his conscience to get all this off his chest. If he doesn't speak now, you have to die with that. He'll be there tomorrow. And he was. He told his story, 
nervous, and rarely making eye contact with his brother. He said it was all a terrible accident. It was the victim's gun, and he didn't even pull the trigger. He was just defending himself. His kid brother had nothing to do with it. The prosecutor countered that by claiming self-defense, Lorenzo wasn't really risking anything. The DA's officer said that this is a convenient way for the family to solve two things. Get one guy out of jail and keep the other guy from going by claiming self-defense. What about that? I didn't ever really think of it like that. <laughs> I never really thought of it like that. I never thought that I would just, you know, walk away from it or stuff like that. Now a second witness, the other former crack addict who testified at the original trial, has also recanted in court, saying he too made the whole thing up. But the hearing isn't over. Not yet. I'm sorry, I just don't think it's appropriate to comment right now. The prosecutor, who has refused Dateline's requests for an interview, has challenged both brothers' accounts. He believes both brothers were somehow involved and even produced Lamont's videotaped statement following his arrest, suggesting he was nearer the scene of the shooting than either brother now claimed. It's about time I reached upstairs. See, I heard, uh... Shot. On the tape, Lamont insists, as he has all along, that he had nothing to do with the actual shooting. So all that matters now is whether the judge will believe his big brother. It's the truth, Lorenzo says. Finally, the whole truth, and it will set both men free. The kid brother in jail says, maybe, but he's not assuming anything yet. I've been down there before. So you won't allow yourself to feel good or hopeful about this? I'm hopeful, I'm always hopeful, but uh, it don't mean nothing to uh, I'm free, I guess. Lorenzo says he knows the damage that's been done. Do you think he might have lost so much faith, so much trust in 13 years in, in prison that he may not want to sit down with you? Yeah, he's still my brother. I just know I love my brother. And um, <laughs> as long as he can sit down and reason, I know we'll be talking again. Lorenzo Branch isn't being charged with murder right now because the Brooklyn DA's office says he hasn't actually confessed to a crime. It's not known if prosecutors will charge him with a lesser offense. The judge in his brother's case has several options. He can let Lamont Branch serve out his sentence, grant a new trial, or with the consent of the prosecutor, dismiss the whole case. We'll let you know what happens. Coming up this weekend on Today, they stake out your home, your child's schoolyard, the woods where you hike, and they attack coyotes, losing their fear of humans. Drought is driving them into our neighborhoods. How can we return them to the wild? That story this weekend on Today. Coming up on Dateline Tuesday, they took on the most powerful force in their lives, their own church, to expose what they say is a terrible evil. I'm attacking God, is what they've said. As Roman Catholics struggle with the crisis of pedophile priests, the faithful of another religion are forced to deal with similar accusations, child molestation by church elders and members. When you said we're taking it to the police, what did they say? Don't, or else. Or else what? And next, the bumps don't look bad. Until you see the bill, how much could this cost you? Are you sitting down? A Dateline consumer alert. Free Domino's cheesy bread, everybody! Free cheesy bread! Free cheesy bread! Free. Where's the cheesy bread? I don't know. Wait, where, where's Samantha? Yeah, where is she? You don't think she... Now, get an order of cheesy bread free when you buy a large one-topping Domino's pizza for just $9.99. What you do with it, of course, is up to you. I'm gonna miss those little fellas. Get the door. It's free Domino's cheesy bread. The heat is on now. It's the Marshall's Hot, Hot, Hot Summer Event. From the beach to the barbecue, find everything you need for summer for your family and your home. Up to 50% off department and specialty store prices. Marshall's, what will you find today? Gina? You know, when I was first hired, we didn't have all these fancy integrated systems. Our sales program wasn't even linked with accounting. Warehouse platform in Chicago wasn't linked to anything, not even shipping. Back then, orders took days. Now, they just take hours. Wow, how long have you been working here? A couple of months now. 
Oh. When software quickly connects all your business systems, that's one degree of separation. That's business with .NET from Microsoft. At the Home Depot, we're driving down the cost of home improvement. Now is the time to buy carpet. Choose from over 3,000 styles, colors, and textures. And right now, get the carpet pad free with installation. Plus, for all your projects, get no payments and no interest till January 2003 on any Home Depot consumer credit card purchase of $299 or more. At the Home Depot, we've got lower prices nailed. I don't have the greatest soil here, and the topsoil you buy isn't much better. But this is miracle Grow garden soil. Premium organic materials plus miracle Grow plant food mixed in. Look at the difference it makes. Have you used miracle Grow lately? Looking for better allergy relief? It's right under your nose. Benadryl. Proven better than the leading prescription antihistamine. Medical studies prove histamine blocking Benadryl to be a full 54% more effective at relieving your worst allergy symptoms, like runny noses. Benadryl, proven 54% more effective than the leading prescription antihistamine. Tresemme. Millions of women can afford to use professional hair care products thanks to Tresemme. Professional products without the salon price. You don't have to spend a fortune for professional quality. Try Tresemme Natural Shampoo and Conditioner with 100% natural extracts and now twice the vitamins A, C, and E. Keeps hair strong and healthy. Tresemme, Tresemme. Professional, affordable Tresemme. The Jazz, the thrill of the NBA on NBC and WPXI. Don't miss all the NBA playoff action on NBC and WPXI TV. More than 35 million Americans are expected to be on the roads this Memorial Day weekend. That's a lot of driving, a lot of traffic jams, and you can bet a lot of fender benders. Which brings us to our latest crash test report. It involves some mid-sized family cars in minor slow speed crashes. They don't look too serious until you see the repair bills. Here's Chief Consumer Correspondent Lee Thompson with the Dateline Consumer Alert. Please. Test will commence in four seconds. Three. What you are watching is a very expensive game of bumper cars. No run-of-the-mill carnival here. These are real mid-sized cars bought off dealers' lots, being bumped into poles and barriers to make a point. At this multi-million dollar vehicle research center, Brian O'Neill and the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety are trying to find out how much it costs to fix a five-mile-an-hour fender bender. We hope our work will prompt manufacturers to make more damage-resistant cars so that we don't get unnecessary repair costs after minor fender benders. Funded by the insurance industry, the Institute also hopes its testing will bring down the cost of insurance claims. For this round, the Institute bought nine mid-sized cars, five luxury cars, two moderately priced, and two inexpensive cars. Each of these 2002 models has already met all government safety standards. Each car is put through four tests, all simulating real-world collisions. First, the front and rear bumpers are tested against a flat barrier. Then tougher tests. The front end is driven into an angle-shaped barrier and the rear into a pole. The CTS 50804. After they are analyzed, each vehicle gets a rating of good, acceptable, marginal, or poor. We start with the luxury cars, $34,000 or more. First up, the Lexus ES300. The damage, over $500 each in three of the four different tests. Too much to get the Institute's highest rating, but the ES300 does get the next best thing, and acceptable. Here comes another Lexus, the IS300. Test number one, almost $1,000 in damage. Number two, over $1,300. 
The poll test, nearly $1,200. Expensive cars typically have got more expensive parts, so you may get the same kind of damage, but the repair bills will be higher because the parts on luxury cars tend to be more expensive. The IS300 gets the Institute's lowest rating, poor. Next, the Volvo S60. It doesn't look like a lot of damage when you take a quick look at it, but underneath this cover, there's a lot of damage. Damage to the frame rails, damage to the bumper bar, all of which adds up to over $800 in repair bills. The S60's repair cost in just the pole test at five miles an hour, almost $1,700. It too gets a poor. The Saab 9.5, a $40,000 car. Last time it went through these tests, it got a marginal. Have Saab's engineers made a better bumper? In every test, the new 9.5 costs more to repair than the old one. And look what happened to the trunk in the pole test. $1,200 worth of damage, extensive damage to the trunk lid. The trunk no longer works. The 2002 Saab 9.5 falls to a poor rating. Last of the luxury cars, the Jaguar X-Type, almost a $40,000 car. The Jaguar X-Type sustained over $2,000 in repair bills after two of its tests. No other vehicle in this group sustained so much damage in a single test. The Jaguar gets a poor rating in the bumper tests. Reviewing the luxury car results, none earned the Institute's highest rating. Only the Lexus ES300 got an acceptable rating, while the four other luxuries are rated poor. And remember, all the cars are only going five miles an hour. Moving on to the two moderately priced cars, $26,000 to $30,000 in price. The TL from Acura. Damage costs for the TL both in the angle and pole test are around $900. Substantial damage, but the Acura TL escapes the lowest rating. It gets a marginal. And Hyundai's newest sedan, the XG350. After the front flat barrier test, the bumper looks okay, but it's what you can't see that drives up the cost. The air conditioning condenser and the radiator are damaged. They will cost $1,000 to fix. The XG350 gets a poor rating. And now the final category, the cars with the smallest sticker prices, $23,000 or less. At first, the Toyota Camry does well in the pole test. They've got this piece of metal, and this sits here to prevent some of the damage in a center impact. It turns out Toyota has put a metal bar right in the middle of the bumper, O'Neill says, just so the car will pass the Institute's test. So we ran a second test off center, and you can see now we have significant damage here. Because How significant? $759 to repair. O'Neill advises if you own a new Toyota Camry and have an accident with a pole, be sure to hit it dead center. The Camry is rated acceptable. Here's the all-new Nissan Altima, another inexpensive car. On this one test, damaged radiator supports and a headlight add up to $1,500. The Ultima's rating, marginal. What do the car makers make of this round of tests? Saab, Jaguar, Volvo, and Hyundai all say their first priority is occupant safety. Hyundai, Acura, and Jaguar say they're working to reduce the cost of repairs. While Nissan and Acura question whether the Institute's tests reflect real-world conditions. Most people probably would assume you get what you pay for, and luxury cars would have pretty tough bumpers. Surprisingly, not one new mid-sized luxury car the Institute has tested has gotten the highest rating. In fact, only two mid-sized cars have gotten goods. The moderately priced Volkswagen Passat and the inexpensive Saturn L series. And how safe are those mid-sized cars? We'll find out what the Insurance Institute learned from its safety tests on Dateline Tuesday. You can also check the repair costs for fender benders on other cars, maybe yours, by visiting our website. The address is dateline.msnbc.com. That's all for this edition of Dateline Friday. We'll see you again for Dateline Tuesday at a special time, 8, 7 central. I'm Stone Phillips, and for all of us at NBC News, good night.
Like millions of Americans, she was looking for 